Our final question of the day comes to us from Tina in Cabot. Can I count my commercial building loan payment toward my savings rate, toward retirement, given that I plan on selling it at some point to help fund retirement? Is there anything specific I need to know about that as part of my plan? Tina, I'd say no. You can't count (laughs) the payment. Now, you've got equity, and you're going to be able to sell that, but the portion, there's a big portion of your payment that is going to be kept by the bank. So you certainly can't count the savings rate or the full payment as the savings rate toward your retirement savings. The math's not going to add up there because the bank's going to take that interest. The bank's going to take those payments. Uh, Obviously, we're assuming you you have a a loan. We don't know where that loan is in terms of its payback, but there's going to be some interest due there, right? So the full amount can't be considered the savings rate. However, the value of the building could be incorporated into future savings. Well, and and one of the challenges there, and this is somewhat true of other investments as well, but we don't really know what the future value is going to be of of that building and what can you get off of that in terms of a revenue stream once it's paid for, once you transition into retirement, if you still own that, then what is the value to you in terms of your retirement income? And Scott, one of the things that we've seen quite a bit since COVID, you know, when, when COVID hit and everybody had to go work from home, then there were a lot of people who frankly never went back to the workplace. We have team members at GenWealth who were here pre-COVID and had an office space assigned to them, and they have never come back into the office full time because relative to their role, we now as a company look at that differently and go, you know what? You don't have to be physically in the office to do this job. So that that has happened nationwide, frankly, globally, uh, in this this change of mindset about office space. And so I get a little bit concerned when somebody says, I own real estate and it's a commercial building and I'm counting on it to a certain degree yeah. for my retirement income because we just don't know what that's going to look like for you. Yeah, I think that's a huge point because we don't know where the future of real estate is going to be. And you really, in essence, put it into, we don't know that it's office space, but whatever it is. Maybe it's a good investment. Maybe it's not in 20 years. So I think it would be wise to make a plan but not count on that commercial building. You need liquid assets. You need other types of investments. We're talking about diversification here. I think real estate is a great piece of the puzzle. But if that's all you're really counting on is I'm going to pay this loan back and I'm going to have a commercial building and that is funding my retirement, I think that's the wrong wrong way to think about Scott, it. Scott, you and I both have real estate out, outside of, of GenWealth. We both have some, and we're doing it in very different ways, but we both have that as an ancillary part of our overall plan. Yeah. But but the key there is ancillary yeah. because we're, we're not counting on that uh, and we, you know whatever we get from it is icing on the cake, so to speak. So And you mentioned planning. Yeah. Um, I I would encourage you really uh, to do two different types of plans or two different uh, completely unique plans here, Tina. One of them is to plan with the building, but to do that very conservatively in those assumptions. And then another one is to plan completely without that building uh, because we just don't know what that's going to look like for you in the future. Yeah, and I think the rental income there, the lease payments, the, the income from that building could certainly be layered into an overall retirement income plan. But again, multiple streams, multiple sources of income. Because quite Mm -hmm. frankly, when we talk about diversification, you mentioned the real estate on our personal side here, Janet. A lot of the reason that I wanted to do that was because I felt like I was too heavily concentrated on the stock side, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the liquid investment side. You don't want it all in one place if you can do that. Uh, I, I like the idea of diversification. So I think we're talking about it the other way here right. for Tina. Uh, it, do you have some uh, allocations to stock, to bond, to other asset classes um, that can be more liquid and that can provide you monthly income? Because that's really the retirement problem is an income problem. It is not an asset problem. Assets create the income, Mm -hmm. but the overall plan has to be solving for replacing your paycheck, replacing your business income, whatever it is you're doing during your work life, you're going to have to create an income stream in retirement at some future date. And it has to come from all of those sources. And that's how planning uh, at GenWealth works. And if anybody is getting close to that retirement, uh, 
red zone, which we would define as five to 10 years out from retirement, or if you're right on the doorstep and you need to walk through that planning process and determine, here's what I've saved. Here's what I've accumulated. How do I turn that into a monthly income stream? The Gen Wealth Ready to Retire process is what you need to walk through. And you can do that with an advisor. You can get the uh, planning started by calling 866-653-PLAN. It's 866-653-7526 to start the process of going through the Gen Wealth Ready to Retire process. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about real estate, you know, we talked about the uh, office space challenge that many people didn't come back from COVID. There are still other opportunities potentially in real estate. And what are the opportunities in the economy in 2024? And as we walk up on our final bell, I'll just make this part of my final thought. Then we'll go to okay. you, and then I might have another final thought, okay. and we might close the show. We We're going to do it different. It's Valentine's we'll it. Day, right? It's fine. <laughs> we did a uh, an entire webinar that you can get for free. It's called the Economic Outlook 2024, A Path Through the Forest. And one of the things we talk about is real estate. Now, we're not talking about hard owning buildings, hard real estate. We're talking about real estate investment trusts. We also talk a a whole range of other types of investments and where potential opportunities may be in investing and where we think the economy is headed in 2024. If you'd like to get uh, signed up for that, to check out Outlook 2024 because it will be very uh, soon. It will be available. Visit GetReadyForTheFuture.com forward slash Outlook, and you can sign up. Or you can even do it a simpler way is to text the word Outlook to that number I'm always giving out, 501-381-5228.